for a little boy of uh, four, three years old running on the road naked. What do you do? What do you do? You wink. What does it mean to wink? You say that this boy is a child. He does not what? He doesn't know. That's why he is running naked. So you wink. Winking there will be pretending as though you have not done what? You haven't seen it, but you have seen it. <laughs> but you know their ignorance. Another way is if I how else would I put it? Let me just say that when God looks at a man breaking the Sabbath, but the man doesn't know, God winks. But in the process of his winking as though he has not seen you breaking his law, he will send the message to you. And he will send the message through preachers and send the message through a classmate and send the message through somebody will bring the truth. And when the truth comes, now you're no longer in darkness. You are in the what? You're in the light. The problem with many people today that is going to make us condemned is written in the book of John. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We are reading verse number 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be what? Might be saved. Why did God send Jesus? So that the world through Jesus might be what? Saved. Now verse 19. And this is the condemnation. What is the condemnation? That light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. So here is God sending light to people. But people are against the light. The light. Now that's what you're going to be condemned for. God condemns us, not for what we don't know, but for what we know, but we refuse to what? We refuse to obey. This is the condemnation. Light has come into the world, but men of what? Darkness rather than what? Light. Someone comes to a meeting like this, they learn the word of God. Light comes to them, but they say, no, I'm going back to darkness. That is when God's condemnation comes upon you. Jesus was preaching to the Jews, and Jesus is the truth. He is the light of the world, but the Jews rejected him. As a result, Jesus said this about it. Uh, this should be John 15 now. John 15. What happens to those who died without knowing? John 15 and verse number 22. John 15, verse 22. The Bible says, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now, having come and spoken to them, they have no clock for their what? For their sin. Jesus is saying, If I had not come and told them that this is sinful and that is sinful, then there was no clock. There, there, there is no guilt. God says he would condemn them. But now that Jesus has come and has spoken, but they reject him, then it becomes a what? It is a sin. It is a sin. So my friend, my, my answer simply is this. God knows how he will deal with those who died without knowing the knowledge about salvation. God knows. You be concerned about you who has learned the what? The truth. You will be blessed in doing the right thing. The next question is uh, the question says in accordance with the question someone asked about being predestined to be a God and while others are sheep Please explain John 17, verse 12. John 17 and verse number 12. The Bible says in John 17 and verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them by thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. 
Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Who is the son of perdition? Judas. Judas. So the question in this person's mind is, is it true that God made Judas to be born for a specific work? His work in this world was to betray what? Jesus, then go to hell. Is that true? No. I do not think so, personally. Here is my thought. Judas Iscariot was given the same chances that other apostles were done what? Were given. Were given. Every sermon Jesus preached, Judas attended it. And Judas, when he came into the ministry, he had one problem. He was covetous. He loved money. Now, every one of those apostles had their weaknesses. Peter, Peter was rash. He even denied Jesus. But was Peter forgiven? Yes. Okay, who else? Thomas, a doubter. Was Thomas forgiven for being a doubter? Yes. Who else? John. What happened to John? John and his brother James were called sons of thunder. One time, Jesus is walking with them through Samaria, and the Samaritans reject to receive Jesus. And when the Samaritans refused to receive Jesus, John and James said, Lord, now that you have given us so much power, can we command fire to come from heaven and devour these people? How can they reject you? Can we just command the fire as it happened in the days of Elijah? And Jesus said, You don't know the spirit that is in you. You do not know the spirit in you. I did not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. So every one of those 12 apostles, they had a certain weakness. But the difference was they allowed the corrections of Christ to change them and transform them. That's the difference. Judas did not make that choice to surrender. Now, let's read something about Judas and Peter and just get the clue about it. I'm reading from John chapter 13 and verse number 2. This is Judas. Was Judas born from birth to betray Jesus? John 13 verse 2 says, And the supper being... Let me begin from verse 1. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come and that he should depart out of this world unto the out of the world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Did Jesus love all of them? Yes. Did he love Judas? Yes, he did. <laughs> now verse 2 says, And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to do what? To betray him. What happened with that verse? Was Judas always since birth? Did he know one day I'm going to betray someone called Jesus? No. Because of his refusal to surrender to Christ and overcome his weakness, the devil exploited his weakness and gave him the idea. And according to some scholars, this was the idea in Judah's heart. But I know Jesus has so much power, he can never be arrested. So this is money for free that I'm going to get. Uh huh. So Judah thinks to himself, I'm going to take these people to Jesus. They will give me the money. I put it in the pocket. Jesus will not know that I was given money to do this because it is a private affair. So I'll keep the money in the pocket. Meanwhile, when they reach Jesus and try to arrest him, Jesus will do a miracle and deliver himself from their hands. As a result, I get the money by fulfilling my side. They get Jesus, but they can't arrest him. Free money, free money. So Judas makes the deal with himself. He knows that at the end of it, <laughs> he is not even going. Nobody will know what he has done. Nobody. Free money. And then Judas sees Jesus just accepting to be arrested. <laughs> and Judas sees people spitting on him and beating him. 
And Judas said, ah, uh -uh, Jesus, do something, do something. Please, do something. You have the power, do something. And Jesus refuses to do something. <laughs> and Jesus had even told Judas, you know, I know what you're about to do. You did it in secret, but I know. In the time of the Passover or that last supper, Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me. And everyone began to ask, Lord, is it I? Is it I? And imagine Judas also, having received the money, he also asked, is it? What was he trying there? He had received the money to betray Jesus. What is he trying to ask? He wants to know whether Jesus knows. <laughs> and Jesus says, it is as you have said. And to confirm, Jesus says, the one I will even beat this thing in his plate or touch the man. And Jesus gives it to, 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 to Judas. All the evidences were telling Judas that all his plans were in the open. He should give up. But Judas had made up his what? His mind. The Bible says the devil entered his heart. How does the devil enter people's hearts? The Bible says resist the devil and what will he do? He will free from you. But when you refuse to resist the devil, he comes so close, he enters the heart and he stays there. When you don't want, when you don't resist, Judas did not resist the enemy. Compared to another disciple called Peter. You know, Judas' work was done quite privately. But Peter's denial of Jesus was public. Who might be have been very ashamed of his sin? I think Peter. But after Peter realizes he has denied Jesus three times, he went and he wept. And he was forgiven. And he was reinstated. So we have a difference between the way these two people approached their mistakes. Now when Judas had committed his sin and he sees Jesus is actually going to be crucified, he came back into the temple to repent. But to who did he repent? To God or to the Jewish priests? He repented to the priest, Matthew 27, verse 1 and 2. I think verse 1 to 3 there, yeah. Peter, uh, Judas says, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent ones, innocent blood. And the Pharisees said to him, what is that to us, you fool? A man who is so low, you can sell your Lord for 30 coins. What is that to us? We don't care. We have what we wanted. And Judas realizes it is lost. He throws back the money to them. The very money he had sold Jesus that he wanted for free. I don't think that Judas was simply, God was <laughs> guiding his mind <laughs> to betray Jesus. God wasn't in that work. The Bible says the devil put it in his mind. The devil entered his heart. If Judas had resisted the working of the enemy in his life, the story would have been different. Someone else might have done it. 